about going to a high needs school, what kind of concerns you the most? Students won't care. Students won't care. Violence. Violence. Student motivation. Student motivation. Okay. Well. Burn the house. Huh? <laughs> what? I said I'm going to burn the house. Burn out. Yes, that's a big one. And that's why we're talking about teacher motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the biggest thing tied to teacher motivation is student motivation, which we just talked about. So, uh, and like uh, Katie said, you have to learn how to motivate yourself and your students effectively. Um, so, Josh, what was one thing that you said worried you about uh, or you think will worry you when you go to the, when you start teaching? Well, like I was saying, I think violence is kind of scary too, but uh, honestly, uh, worried that you're going to have, it's going to be like a babysitting. Babysitting? Yeah, that you get in that role of just being there and sitting in the room with your students and just going through the process and not actually. Okay. Um, well, the first thing we're going to talk about, though, is parents. So that kind of ties into violence, maybe. You want to keep the parents calm. <laughs> so I know that getting parents involved is one of the topics. So we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about how to not worry about them, because that's one of the uh, main worries of new teachers, is how to handle parent-teacher conferences. So, um, we want their kids to do well, so that's an <clears throat> intrinsic motivator, and they know that you're on their side. Um, always open the students' strengths, and uh, always keep uh, their papers on hand so you can show the parents exactly what you need. And if you need to talk to them about anything specific, make sure that you have all of that stuff on hand too. And always keep the focus on the student. Don't get into any fights with the parents over uh, things or let them talk about themselves or something. Just keep their focus on the student and you know the school policy. Um, there was also an interesting article on email because lots of people email nowadays. I know that not everybody has email, but for parents that like to email you a lot, you have to make sure that when you email them back, or if there's a problem with anything, you don't start out with that. You always start out positive. And you have to watch your tone in email because sometimes things come across as harsher than what you mean them. Uh, so once again, I always mention the positives. And to help regulate tone, make sure you keep it to the point. And parents like to hear emails about grade issues. They don't like to hear, they want to actually hear it from you face to face or on the phone if there's some kind of behavioral problem. So another good way to uh, keep, keep parents, uh, uh, keep difficult parents uh, focused on the issues is to ask for help instead of just telling them what the problem is should do, or you could offer help. Like if a student needs extra tutoring or something, you could offer to do that, or offer names or something for people to help them. And you could ask that the parents set aside study time for their students, so their uh, kids, so that they have opportunity to study without any interruption. And don't rely too much on you
is you want to keep growing. So uh, another way to do that is work with teachers because uh, it's important to have adult conversations after you've been teaching high school the whole day. Uh, you can join a teacher learning community. You can try to do action research. It probably will be more informal when you first try, but you can like try different kinds of testing, different kinds of homework and stuff, and compare which ones the students like better or do better on. And reflecting on your own teaching uh, is very important too. Uh, Self-efficacy is very important to teachers because we probably don't feel exceptionally confident right now at teaching. So we just have to keep pushing ourselves and uh, kind of control our stress and uh, believe that we'll succeed. Uh, part, a big part of keeping up high self-efficacy is how you attribute your performance. Okay, you have to focus on yourself and not blame the students or uh, uh, focus on the things that you can't change about the classroom. And setting goals is important. You don't want to set goals that are too vague or that you don't think you can attain fairly quickly. Uh, Short goals, short term goals are important to keep your spirits up and uh, always be aware of high thinking and self control. So, uh, what would you do if you had a parent teacher, te parent teacher conference coming up? Katie, I'd probably like sit down and take time to think about each student to make sure that everything I wanted to bring up to the parent, um, like I had it in front of me, like a note sheet, so that I got to everything and I didn't forget something. Um, and make sure to find at least one positive about every student so that the parents don't feel like their kids are complete waste. And I know that when I was a student, my parents would come back and tell me what my teacher said. So I want to hear that the teacher thinks something positive about me. I would have printouts of what the student, how the student was performing in the class, and I'd have a printout showing how the student compared to his other classmates, so the parent could understand how the other student was performing when compared to their style. So, you would, would you, how would you compare them? Uh, like how, as far as, I would use grades. Is that kind of grades? Yeah. You, you wouldn't use the names, right? You would just have. Oh, I wouldn't show the, uh, the, the names of the other students. Yeah. I would just show maybe a distribution of where their child was compared to the rest of the class. Okay. Maybe like a specific example, but like maybe how the average test went. Like Something like that. But I'd also talk about like classroom involvement too, I think. That's just a good idea. And another thing kind of like what Katie says, I provide um, maybe prepare for and lots of constructive um, you know, um, feedback for the students so that either you could maybe even hand a card to the um, parents to give to the student or have the parents in a lot, you know, just talk to the parents and say, Okay, well your student, you know, he's really strong in this, this, and this. But he could maybe do this a little bit better, maybe he's not doing this correctly because of a reason. And they, um, maybe them understanding kind of helps them understand the grades he's, you know, he or she is giving in the classroom. Uh, one thing that I've seen at parent teacher conferences that I really liked was a piece of paper that had a slit cut in it so that the teacher could take the actual grade book and right. lay the paper over it and just highlight their child's performance, you know, that way they're not seeing everybody else's, but if there are lessons that they haven't turned in or anything like that, you know, right here it is. And, you know, that way you've got the actual records and it's not just a printout. That saves you time of having to make up, you 
know all this other stuff to, uh, but you know definitely prepare for the parent teacher conference and get yourself you know, uh, go ahead and turn all your ducks in a row. <laughs> okay. Um, resources for things that either maybe what you're doing isn't working for a particular class you can say okay well what are you doing with your class with this specific topic and is it working and implement it in your class to help your students um, to collaborate you know across content areas as well Yeah. 
think they could all be useful goals. I mean, honestly, you don't want to bore your students any, any day. Um, so I think you could refine that goal as to how are you not going to bore them. And that would be, that would be more specific and very useful and applicable. Um, and then obviously getting to know the students helps you create those, that intrinsic motivation because you know what they like. You know what motivates them. So you can integrate it into your classroom somehow. I think it would be a good idea to try to learn something about each student each week, not just the first week. Yeah. You know, keep learning about them. Yeah. The second goal is sorry. This is just one goal. Yeah. Well, I'm going with A. Uh, I'm going to get my students to learn on a new conceptual level. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the same with C. Yeah, I'm sticking with C because A is the teaching goal and that's your ultimate goal no matter you know if you're motivated or not. That's the teaching goal. Yeah. Second goal is just a bad goal. goal. It's a long term goal. I'm actually going to put together two and three and say not learn a boring fact. <laughs> <laughs> as far as a motivational standpoint, I'd say that getting the students to learn on the potential level could actually be rewarding for you and therefore mm -hmm. um, is, is a goal that, that could provide motivation when you succeed. The second one is stated negatively, so I don't feel like that's very good, you know, ooh, yay, I didn't bore my students today, good job me, you know, I don't feel like that's going <laughs> to make me feel good about myself, I, you know, that much. The, um, you know, learn one fact about each student provides a relationship, you start caring more about the students, which will 
hopefully provide some motivation. So I think that one would be an, an acceptable one. Okay. So. I think, like, for me, C is the most important one out there at for a good motivational goal because I can measure it. I can tell myself, hey, did I learn something about every single student? So I know if I met my goal or not. I don't. I, I'm not going to know right off the bat if they're understanding on a deep conceptual level or right. whether or not they were bored. They may have been bored, but physically engaged in what they were doing, just going through the motions, but they were still bored. Mm -hmm. So I can physically measure that about myself if I know, if I can, if I can determine if I can know one fact about each student by the end of the week. So that know. would be a better goal for me. <laughs> well, I, I think you can <laughs> measure <laughs> I think you measure the first one anyway. You kind of have to. That's well, yeah, but that's more of a long, like long term. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's more towards your students. Yeah, and that is your ultimate teaching goal. So I mean, it's right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to come. It's going. It's going to come at the end. And and I understand that if you can succeed in doing that, yeah, that's definitely going to give you, you know, a, a motivation boost to you know. But but I mean, you're you're going in there and teaching every single day, and I, I feel that if you can, you know build a stronger relationship with your students, you know, each and every day, each and every week, then you're going to have, you know, e even if they're not understanding at a deep conceptual level, does that mean you fail? Does that mean you're, you know, not motivated to continue teaching? No, probably not. In fact, if you, you know, do complete that third goal, you know, you get a better relationship with your students, and you're going to be more motivated to help them reach a deep conceptual understanding. So, what's important about setting goals to motivate yourself? Well, obviously, it has to be attainable for one thing. I mean, because if you set a goal, it's an goal that's not attainable. It's not a good goal. But um, also, uh, I think for motivation, I think it has to be. Um, <laughs> I think it would be good to have like a long term goal in mind and then have short term goals that you can meet maybe every week or every day. Yeah. And maybe the long term goal of A, which is to be a conceptual understanding of the material, is that's your long term goal, and maybe your short, shorter term goals is help all your students and you know, try to affect both of them. Well, I was going to say that I think having a very methodical approach to it is good because they don't, you know, you aren't paid. You know, one of the criteria on whether you get paid or not or whatever is going to is, is is not. Are you very motivated? You know, I mean, motivation can maybe help get you raises or something if you, if you present yourself well, but there's no no one else checking up on your motivation all the time. <clears throat> Which, for me, that makes it one of the most important things to focus on because I have to check myself. I don't have anybody else telling me, hey, you weren't motivated today in there, baby. You looked bored and instructing those students. So I, that part of not having someone else to check up on me is a motivator for me because I know that I have to stay on top of it myself. But that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so... What's something important to keep in mind so that you don't burn out? So you don't burn out. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the little things. All the time. Say what? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so little things, do you mean like the short freshman or uh, what are you going to get? Yeah. Not sure. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> Just like daily, like. Try to find, like, I think finding something good about what you did and how that helped your students every day. Like, whether it's this kid, he didn't understand it yesterday, but he could do this problem today. Or so-and-so was able to make a connection between this and what we did last week. Whatever it is, even if it's just one student, one goal, make sure that you keep yourself, like, and also it's about awareness, like, be aware of stuff that's going on so that you can see your progress and theirs. Yeah. Along the same lines of what you said, right? but if you were to look at the big picture, as far as like the sixty percent, that would really be demotivating because you're like you're doing the whole class. You know, that would cause me not to want to teach that class if they were all doing poorly. But 
by looking at the smaller individual students and seeing their successes is, is a wonderful program. I you mentioned the learning communities earlier and you know getting involved in the learning community would be a good way because then you can share ideas and kind of share the load and help motivate each other. what you guys can do is certainly think about, I mean, you've got to find that healthy balance between who you are as a person and what you do for a living. And making sure that you don't lose you. So you've still got to find things to do that, you know, fulfill you outside of school because if you become consumed, which let me tell you, you can do it, you can live it, you can breathe it 365 days out of the year 24 7. And you can bring it home with you, and that's all you're thinking about with those. Like, you've got to find what your healthy balance is and what will help you kind of refresh yourself each and every day. Like, that's going to be extremely important. So let's take a break. Good job, Katie. Thank you for that. I love how the ties are going together here. Okay. What would you do questions for okay. first?